Ah, Nom, there you are. Come in and take a seat, please. Yes, I do look a bit small behind this desk, but that's not what we're here to discuss. I gave you one job to do as we took over at NK Dob. As assistant manager, I asked you to check the league rules. What happened, Nom? Come on, Nom, you can't seriously think that's any kind of excuse. Hey, there's no need for that kind of language, young man. You've left me with no other option. This could cost us our jobs. I'm going to have to bench you, Nom, until a time as I can trust you again. I'm sorry, Nom, my mind is made up. That's all there is to say about it. Alan, Alan, yep, get warmed up, son. I'm subbing you in. So hands up, who's tried to create the toughest football manager save ever attempted and inadvertently made it more difficult? Yep, this chap here, because when I selected Slovenia as the league, I didn't read the league rules. Let's be honest, whoever does. And it turns out that in Slovenia, players under the age of 17 years old are not allowed to play. And if our youth academy prospects come through at the age of 15, about to have their 16th birthday... It's going to be an entire year from the time they come through until we can pick them. And they're not going to be coming through until March. Now, that wouldn't be a problem. But by that time, I think the squad is going to be threadbare. At the moment, we've only got one player that is outside of the matchday squad. If everybody else is fit, that is not going to be the case next season. We've got one, two... Three players on loan. They could all return to their parents' club for next season. So that's three players will be down. Two spots on the bench we can't fill. We've got a 40-year-old in midfield who's refusing to sign a new contract. So if Clement Kunstall retires, as I fear he might do, that means that we've now got three empty spots on the bench. We've also got a problem with Ivan Makovic in that every time we go to offer him a new contract, and we would like to, he keeps saying that he thinks that although he's willing to sign, a new contract would be on inferior terms. Lad, you're on about 120 quid a week. I'll match it. I'll exceed it. But for some reason, he won't even negotiate. And we do have a player who's not even in the squad. I've relegated him down to the under-19s, and unfortunately, he's our captain, because we've had a bit of a falling out. So if we check out the club hierarchy, we'll see that some of the players are at best ambivalent towards my existence. Many are opposed to my management, including a couple of influential players. And the problem is this young chap down here, Jakir Kaznic, who's made a reasonable start to the season, but nothing too spectacular. But on transfer deadline day, a top flight club came in for him. I turned the offer down because I can't afford to lose yet another player. He was not happy about that whatsoever. And lots of the fringe players came and backed him, including the club captain who was out of the starting 11 at the time. They actually came into the office twice on the second occasion. They said that I'd lost the dressing room and they could no longer support my management. It was a bit of a tough time. I was getting asked lots of questions in the media about my inability to control the support of my squad. So we've relegated the captain down to the under-19s to try and make that particular problem disappear. I think we've smoothed over the issues with Kaznic now because he says he no longer wants to leave the club. And we earlier got a message to say he's no longer opposed to my management. So hopefully... We've ironed out some of those difficulties, but troubles with the hierarchy are not the only barriers we've been encountering. The other little hiccup we've had is in the recruitment of staff, and in particular, finding a data analyst. I convinced the board to allow us to have one. I've had the job advert running for three months now, and nobody will apply for it. Alan, I don't suppose you'd be interested, would you? But there is good news behind the scenes. Yes, I still look like a primary school child sat at this desk. Let's not dwell on that. Because we've got good news to celebrate in the form of welcoming not one, but two new patrons to the channel in the shape of Brian Shea, or as you may know him, regular guy who has his own Football Manager YouTube channel. We'll be linking that rascal down in the video description below. But we're also welcoming Jake Callahan as our second brand new Patreon. And we're going to try and reward them with a win today. But before we get out to the game and see how we do... We've got more news to update you on. The first piece of news is a member of staff that we have managed to attract, and it's an important one because the club did not have a head of youth development. 
when we took over. So we've put a job advert out and we've managed to attract one that I think is all right. This is Dennis Minaric. I don't think he's going to be a world beater. He's on £100 per week, but he's got a fairly professional personality. So hopefully that will translate to some of the personalities of the youth players that come through. He likes to park the bus. He loves a 4-4-2. He likes a direct style of play. I'm hoping some of those things might just edge him towards bringing through some robust defenders because we need those in our squad. His second preferred formation is a 4-3-3 DM wide, which matches with what we're playing pretty much now as well. And if we have a look at his information, his media handling style is reserved, which is, again, good for the old youth products that he's bringing through. Hopefully they won't be attracted too much to the controversy because we've had enough of that already. On the pitch, though, we should probably show you how things have been going. And you saw us beat Kershko in our season opener with a late goal. Well, wait until you see what happened next. We took on a side called Ragashka and we blew them away. In fact, we were 4 0 up at the break. Simon Grigorin was amongst the scorers, and in the second half, we added a fifth as Zenkovic scored for the second game running. But then we had a four game winless run with a 0 0 draw in game three, followed by a 1 0 defeat in game four. In our fifth game, we took on Triglav and we went a goal down, but Mitrovic equalised before we suffered another defeat and we lost 3-2 in a game we really should have won. The opposition goals came from a direct free kick, an indirect free kick, and they scored a third from the penalty spot. Whereas we actually managed to create some good openings with Zenkovic scoring his third goal of the season and Simon Gregorin had had a goal disallowed before he pulled another one back for us and we searched for an equal equalizer that never came this run of form coincided with the player mutiny and we started to feel under a little bit of pressure in our next game we had a goal disallowed before 40 year old clement kunstel settled the game and one of those victories was a really convincing 4-1 win in the first round of the cup against a team that's in the same division as us and it set up a tie in the next round against our parent club dom Schala. so that one is going to ignite the rivalry in the local area. All of our run of four means that we're not actually doing too bad in the league, despite this really tough spell in the middle of our fixtures so far. In fact, we are in second place in the league table. We're just a point behind the North American Free Trade Agreement. How they've got a sponsorship with the Slovenian club, goodness only knows. Looking down the table, we are only, what, two points from mid-table, we're only four points from getting dragged towards the relegation zone, so we're not getting carried away at this stage. We have done well so far, considering how limited the squad is, and we have tweaked the tactic as well. So the main change that we've made came during that spell of four games where we could not win a game, and we've taken the central midfielder who was on defend, and we just moved them to being an outright DM, hoping that they'll give us a little bit more solidity, but we're also hoping that it might give better passing options to the two centre-halves. Because if you have a look at Datchman and Mitrovic, and the amount of times that they give away possession during a 90-minute match, it's over 40 times between them. It's just way too many occasions when they're thumping the ball aimlessly upfield, and the opposition are gobbling it up. So hopefully, having a DM in front of them will just give them an easier, safer passing option. Going forward, we've also changed the inverted wingers and inverted forwards to wingers for a couple of games because these two weren't playing particularly well as inverted or inside forwards. And it means that Shepek has now gone back up front. He's not been in the goals recently, but we're hoping he might be on the score sheet today. And let's show you the opposition that we're going to be up against as we reintroduce the scout report. Today, we are taking on Alaminyi, a club that are based in the town of Kidrachevo in the east of the nation. This is a team that are much fancied for the title, but we beat them in pre-season and their form has been patchy so far. And two draws and two defeats leave them in fifth place in the table, but tied on points with us. The man in the opposite dugout will be Robert Pevnik and he will be hoping to lead his side to glory as Dob take on Alaminyi. As the boys take the kickoff, I've paused the game straight away because the first game of the season we showed you was away from home so I thought this would be a good opportunity to give you the stadium tour as you can see 
Three sides of the ground have no potential for spectators whatsoever. Yet, oddly, even though the main stand is down here, we're putting all the refreshment outlets on completely the opposite side of the ground, just making sure that all of our fans get their steps in during the game. It looks like we're well stocked for burgers as well. We're only getting attendances of about 100 people, but we've got one, two, three, four in this corner of the ground as well. Now, given that potentially half of the supporters might eat during a typical game, that's only 50 of them, whether we need to have five kiosks open and staffed, this is costing money, by the way, for an entire game, I don't know, maybe each of the supporters visits multiple times. We've also got absolutely no shortage of parking space. No cars out there, by the way. Nobody comes to watch us. But if you did ever fancy a trip over, you would have your pick of the spaces. Anyway, that's our tour of the ground. Remember, we've got almost 288 seats in it. Let's get into the game proper. Been a bit of a cagey opening six minutes. Only one shot so far. We've had it. And we've got the ball deep in our defence. And we're watching these defenders to see if we can try and get them to play the ball into midfield rather than launching it long. We want our midfielders to do the more direct passing. And Kiglar is one of those. And he has fed Gaic now back as an attacking right winger. And he has arrowed one into the top corner of the net right from the edge of the area. And this is a strong start for us against a good side. We're actually playing Kiglar as a central midfielder on support with a couple of PIs on there allowing him to play some more risky passes. He's teed up one of his teammates there, and we've got an early lead. We have just launched a long kick up the field. Our opponents have won it, and they've got the ball in the midfield, and they're looking to try and get back into the game. Gregorin follows his player instructions and tackles hard, and now he's been tackled himself before getting the ball back to our fullback. And Kunstel is in! The 40-year-old is up from... The DM slot. I'm not actually keen on him getting that far forward. But he found himself on the edge of the box. He was fed by, I think it was Markovic, the left back. And he has rifled it in from the edge of the box. In fact, it was. He's taken a touch. And he has ripped another effort home to give us a 2-0 lead. As we make our way to half time, Aluminium have got a late corner. We've got two minutes to the break. They've slung the ball in. Mitrovic is an absolute powerhouse in both boxes and eventually Makovec deals with it back there I would like the halftime whistle now you can see we've still got a few performances that are not that impressive we've got five shots three on target compared to their five shots and two on target I'm not sure we're really worth the two goal lead and we've got a couple of players that I think should be performing a little bit better Shipek has not been on a good run neither has Simon Gregorin really and we've also got Yaka Kaznic, who is the one-to-way player, who's on a 6.6. .6. I think around the 55-minute mark, we might make some changes. A nice, quiet second half will absolutely do for me. No highlight, a 2-0 win. And I guess we will be no worse off than second in the table. We do not want to be anywhere near promotion this season, by the way as our opponents have a free kick on the edge of our box, and we've already conceded two direct free kicks this season. Let's see what happens with this one. Mitrovic looks like he might have picked up a knock. Nothing too serious, we hope, as they curl home another effort. And I think I might need to have a look at the height of the players that are standing in our wall, as this is the third time in nine games that we've conceded a direct free kick. We've scored one of our own, but three is just too many. And it's set pieces that constantly seem to be our undoing. We're going to make a pause and we're going to make a change, I think. But back to not wanting to get promotion. If we go up next season when we don't have any players in the squad, it could be the end of this save because I think I'll get sacked. The change we've made is to take our striker, Shipek, off. In his place, we've brought on Zenkovic, who's gone onto the left wing. And Simon Gregorin has gone up front to see whether he has more luck up there than he's had on the left wing. Here's the right winger, though, Gaic. And he's taken the ball a little bit too far. He tries to squeeze it home. I think he should have shot earlier. He made it too difficult on himself. And instead, it's poised at 2-1. This is a fragile lead, I fancy. We've now up to eight shots, four on target. 
and we've got some more performances of note. We've got our midfielder, Kaznic, now on a 6.5. And I think, actually, before I can sub him, he's just going to get his second booking of the game, making this a much tougher match to see out. We have nine minutes to see out with 10 men, and we've taken off a couple of our tired players, including 40-year-old Clement Kunstel, turning into a bit of a hero. He's had a great game today, but his fitness was low, so we've brought on our Belge to play in midfield, and Gregor in another game where he has not been very impressive and he's meant to be one of our best players. So we've brought on the youngster Cherney to play as a striker for the final nine minutes. We're also going to change to our hold out the game tactic and see whether we can just steal these three points. We've got all the way into injury time. I think we're going to pause it at this highlight and we're going to throw on the full time wasting. Hopefully our opponents will not score from this. We've got the ball with Makovic and now our Belge. You can see he's not the biggest player in that midfield and he's been dispossessed. And they've had a long shot that our goalie has got both hands to and tipped it into the net. And we've been undone by a 25-yarder. Oh, our Belge was tackled way too easily. But this has found its way past our keeper too easily as well. It's not even a powerful shot. He's got both of his mittens on it and it's just gone through his gloves. I don't think there's any point throwing the full time wasting on now. We're going to have to settle for a point from being 2-0 up. But some individual errors and a red card have cost us dearly. At least a point keeps our unbeaten run going and we are 10 points clear of the drop zone. So that's encouraging, but we're going to need to bring you a better result in our next episode. If this is going to continue to be your favourite FM23 YouTube series.